Hi guys, I got some time to make a tutorial today. I've been real busy trying to finish up my game. That's why I haven't been making any videos. And uh, But I have some time today and whenever I find something that I use in my game that I don't really see too many tutorials for, uh, I'll try and make one. So here we're going to deal with uh, sprite masks in Unity. And so there's my graphic for my power up bar that I'm using. And what I want to do here is, is I want to be able to, well, you'll see the effect as we get closer to the end. But what I'm doing here is I'm just, I'm in quick mask mode. And I'm filling each segment here with a different opacity. So basically, I filled the first one at 8 on the brightness. And then I'm going to fill this one at 16 on the brightness. But remember, I'm in quick mask mode here. So this is really giving me a selection of varying, well, of opacities. So now I'm just incrementing it and then going to go down the whole way and do it like that. So the reason that this could be helpful is because in order to do what I'm trying to do another way, I'd have to have a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of different sprites in order to get it done. Whereas if I do it this way, I really only need two sprites, as opposed to probably like, let's say, 24 sprites. So that's why I'm doing it this way. This could cause a little bit more batching doing it this way, but it's not an issue for me in my game, so I prefer doing it. I'm going to do it like this. So I just inverted that selection. Now I'm going to fill it with black, and you'll see that just gives me a, a strip there that matches my matches my graphic and I'm just going to save it as a PNG. Now on Unity here I already have a project, a 2D project created and I'm just going to import that graphic and I'm going to put it on multiple I'm not going to generate a physics shape I'm just going to Cut these two sprites out real quick. So that's that one. Then we'll do the top one. And then we can use these. Okay, so I'm just going to create a the empty game object here. I'm just going to call it Power Bar. And what we're going to do is, is I'm going to drag the sprite, the actual Power Bar, under inside of that. And I'm going to place it down there. And the reason why this is useful is because it would be real tough to have to deal with cutting, breaking all these sprites apart and then controlling them one at a time. Um, and I felt like this was an elegant way. So what else I did, I just added a sprite mask. And I'm going to drag our mask into that slot there. So now I just centered it over top of our sprite. So now I just had the sprite mask and the sprite. They're both in the power bar. And then I'm going to go into the actual sprite, the one that we, the visible one, not the mask. And I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to rename it to front. And I'm going to turn the mask interaction to visible inside masks. Now you'll see now when I scroll through the alpha cutoff on my sprite mask, I'm able to. I'm able to increment through my power bar using this alpha cutoff. And like I said, this may cause a couple more batches than it would if you were to just use the sprites. But for me to do this effect, I would have had to have 20-something sprites where with this, I'm able to just do it in two. So that's why I feel like it's worth it. And I, I don't have 
any issues with too many batches in my game, so it's not really an issue. So you can see, like I said, now what I'm doing here is I'm going to clone that. And so, because what we want to do is we, we want to have one of one color on one side and one of another color on the other side of the mask. And so we're going to go into, I just, I cloned the first one. And I'm just going to call this one power bar back. And I'm going to change the color to a gray. And I'm just going to change the mask interaction to a visible outside mask or a visible inside mask. So now you can see one's visible outside, one's visible inside, and when we scroll through our power bar, we're able to notch through it. Um, and I kind of feel like this was, well, it was definitely the most easy way to deal with this. Um, as far as not having to deal with a bunch of sprites, so this is the way I'm going about doing it. Uh, so that's all we got to deal with for that. Now, what we what we have to do here is, I what I originally intended to do was just multiply by an index to get the the exact alpha amount, but it turns out that there's some kind of discrepancy between the conversion of the alphas in Photoshop and in Unity. And it's not 100% linear. So, I mean, I could have probably done it, but it was taking too much fussing. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to, I just created a script, and this is going to be for our power bar. And I just, I'm getting the sprite mask. That's what I'm doing here. And I'm getting another serialized field, and I'm going to do a float of, uh, array of floats. And this way, I'm just going to put the alphas that I need, the alpha amounts that I need into this array instead of trying to increment them because like I said there was this there there was a, it wasn't linear the alphas the conversion between Photoshop and uh, and then unity there was a slight difference and instead of trying to figure it out this is I feel like this was just easier to deal with so what we're gonna do here is and I'm just gonna in that float array just gonna add. I'm gonna drag our sprite mask into our sprite mask, and then I'm gonna create a array of 12 floats. And you can see I just go through these amounts, and then for each notch, I'll place that amount into the array. So the first one would be at one, and then so forth. It goes down a little bit, and you'll see that it's not exactly linear. The way that when you look at the numbers. So there's all the amounts for each segment of our, that's it for each alpha, it, that gives us each alpha for each segment that we want. So now I can just use that array to increment through my power bar, basically. Okay, so I just want to do a quick setup that shows how to increment through this. And you're going to have to figure out a way to incorporate this in your, in your own setup. But I just want to show how you can increment through. I, I don't like doing it unless I have something that's like I can actually show how it works. So that's the only reason I'm adding this. So I'm just going to use the mouse buttons to increment in each direction. That's all I'm doing here. So I'm just getting checking if the mouse button's down. And then I'm also checking if the, the current step, which is zero, because that's what the integers get initialized to. I'm checking if it's greater than the length minus one. So as long as, as the current step isn't at the end, it'll when I click the mouse button one, it'll go in that direction. So I'm just going to set the alpha cutoff to the the spot in the alpha steps array that's at current step. Well, minus minus current step, just so it increments the current step. Um. And that's all. That just uses the one mouse button to, to take power away. And then for this one, I'll just add it so that I can put the uh, power back on. And like I said, this is just to show you how to increment through the power bar. 
you're going to have to go about it much more. It's going to be different for however your game is. And I mean, in reality, you're probably going to want to have some events in here. Um, I know I have a few events in mine in my game, which I'll show you at the end. But you can see here how we can increment through this if I click the mouse buttons. And like I said, you can have events in there and shoot off some events if you need to. Or, But that's how you can increment through it and use sprite masks. I also want to show you guys uh, where I'm at in my game progress. I'm pretty proud of how it's coming out so far. Um, it, I think it, it's really fun to play. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the gameplay anyway. And I, I think it's going to turn out really good when it's when it's all done. But, I mean, there's a lot to do yet. The gameplay is not complete at all. There's um, there, the, there's a lot to be done with scoring, and I have to deal deal with AI a bit more because there's going to be two modes. You can play against another person, or you can play against AI. So i got to deal with that. And I, I have it started, but it's, it's not completed yet. And I also have a couple more power-ups to deal with and some stuff with scoring. I, there's a, still a lot to do, but it, it's far enough where you can get the basic idea of what the gameplay is going to be like and I'd be interested in any feedback people might have. Um, it, it's really fun to play. I've wasted so much time playing against myself and it's uh, it's not even a complete game yet. So I think it's going to be really fun to play when it's done. But here's what I got so far. Uh, if anybody's interested in beta testing in about, I guess about two months, a month or two maybe, it'll be ready to be beta tested. But um. Just send me an email and uh, the kind of phone you have. It's got to be a multi multi touch Android. I'm going to do iOS too, but it, that's not going to be done until afterward. So, uh, hey, let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Tutorial, and take care, guys.